What is good you guys, today we're going to be taking a look at overclocking a K branded CPU on a non Z motherboard. So this has been all over the forums and instead of putting my input into the forums, now this is an old topic too that uh, I didn't really even think about doing because I just assumed that you couldn't do it um, until a little bit ago, a few months ago, I came across a 4790K and I put it in an H81 motherboard that I had laying around and just decided to see if I could overclock it since it goes around the same um, thing if the Pentium G can go in it, uh, 3258, and overclock with an unlocked multiplier, what would be the difference between putting anything else like a k 4790K or um, 4690, 4670, 4770, basically any of the case CPUs, why wouldn't it work um, since they also have unlocked multipliers. Now, this is for Haswell, this is not for Skylake, and the main reason that this probably isn't going to happen with Skylake is because with Haswell they had the G4 uh, 3258 and uh, because of that low cost CPU a lot of motherboard manufa uh, manufacturers were allowing overclocking on lower end motherboards um, to kind of compensate with not wanting to spend $100 on a uh, Z97, Z87 motherboard to overclock this $60 CPU. Um, so they incorporated to where their H81s, H87s, H97s, B85s um, were able um, to work with CPUs with unlocked multipliers. Now, I will say that I ran into an issue with the Pentium G3258 and that is probably due to the micro code because I would be getting a Windows blue screen every time I went to 4.5 gigs on a 3258. Now that is used to never happen and it's a Windows blue screen because it's not a motherboard blue screen, it's not an actual crash, it's just a the operating system isn't going to load at this frequency on that processor. Though the 4790K, 4670K, 4770K all worked fine and went past 4.5, um, the 3258 just couldn't. So that's um, probably an issue with Microsoft's micro code that they threw in there. But we'll give a little quick show real quick. So as we can see here, um, we have CPU Z open. I'll go ahead and zoom in on that for you guys so you guys can get a better look at it. Um, and because this computer isn't hooked up to the internet currently, we are using codename Devil's Den, which if you guys remember has a uh, Asus H81i motherboard in there and uh, right now it's got a 4790K as we can see right here and I don't have any stress testing software on here and it's not hooked up to the internet but I do have this um, mem preview which will work in this case so right here is our course or core uh, clock speed so we'll go ahead and hit start benchmark and as we can see it'll boost up to 4, 5, uh, 98.9 so 4600 megahertz is what we're getting on that or 4.6 gigahertz and as we can see here under motherboard we have an Asus H81i plus so that's just showing you right there right off the bat you can overclock it now um, before we hop into the BIOS and go look at it this is running the latest BIOS um, as of a few months ago I don't know I always kept his um, this computer on the latest BIOS I haven't checked in probably like three months if there has been any new BIOS releases but I will say that the most current BIOS that was on this um, PC works just fine um, and I don't see Asus taking away that feature anytime soon though I will say that with the other ITX H81 motherboard from Azrock that I have the one with Wi-Fi I think they only have two ITX motherboards if I'm correct um, H81s um, and one of them has Wi-Fi, one of them doesn't. The one with Wi-Fi is the one that I have, and I had to roll the BIOS back three previous ber versions just to get it to overclock the 3258, but it did overclock the i7 as well. Um, like I said, just the newest versions of the Ace Rock BIOS didn't even have the adjustment knobs that you would need to overclock. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys. Uh, we'll go ahead and power, and we'll restart the system and hop in the BIOS and check it out. That moment when you forget to press delete because you were messing with the camera. Spam delete, alrighty. So now we are in our BIOS here. Um, if you guys wanna see the version of the BIOS that I am running, is bio, uh, BIOS version 2305 up top here. Um, we have a 4790K, four gigahertz, yada yada, 16 gigs of RAM. Um, but this is a Asus H81i Plus as we can see right here. So we are confirming that this is an H81 motherboard and I need my keyboard out a little bit so I can press the F7 here. Sorry, it's on a drawer. Alrighty, advanced mode. So we'll go into advanced mode and as we can see here, um, we do have an overclocking um, profile and everything. 
um, that we can adjust. We can set the core limit to auto if we want. So if we, if we feel like having auto, then you know, auto, sync all cores, auto. So normally you would come in and it would look like this. So we'll go ahead and put sync all cores and we'll put a 46 right there. And you know what, let's, let's go ham, 47. We'll go to a 4.7 um, and we'll put it 1.26 volts. Um, and I know what this chip is capable of. I could push it to 4.85 on 1.28 volts, I think. Uh, 1.29, I don't remember. Um, either way, it, it, it's capable of, of fairly fast speeds on this chip. Um, but it does let us change the voltage here. Now, there is something with H81 motherboards that I wouldn't suggest doing this is because the power delivery system on these motherboards are not the most you know best ever they're 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 not made for this um but there are some h87 uh, i believe i had an h87 motherboard from msi i picked up for like 50 dollars a while back in one of my other videos and it's got a pretty beefy power delivery system and it did allow me to overclock the 3258 on the most current bios so you definitely would be able to throw a case skew in there and overclock the living crap out of it um, and that was a $40 motherboard um, that was only an H87 comparing it to a Z97 or Z87 motherboard that's fairly cheap though the prices have gotten uh, a lot easier to manage lately um, since it's not the newest of the new hardware so here we are fan speed just making sure that the fan will turn up because I don't want it to overheat running pumping that much voltage into it and running it that quick so we'll go ahead and save changes as we can see 46 to 47 so we're just overclocking it slightly more and giving it a full full uh, 0.01 volt, you know what I mean? Just to make sure that it'll pass and I, I don't feel like tweaking voltage to get it perfect. But like I said, I wouldn't suggest holding a stable um, high overclock on a low end motherboard like this, but I'm just showing that it is possible and I would I would feel comfortable running it around 4.4 gigahertz um, without an issue, you know what I mean, 4.5. You gotta remember you're also pumping in, what, 1.32 volts to get a 4.6 overclock on a 3258. I'm pretty sure you can do 1.27 volts on this to a Core i7, but it does take up more power. So it's just something you would have to, you know, finick around with and uh, kind of just mess around and see what you can get. So we'll go ahead and pop open CPU ID thingy, CPU Z, um, right there, 4.7. But we'll go ahead and open up the mem uh, just to make 100% sure. Yeah, you hear the fan ramping up. Like I said, I don't want it to overheat. So I'm, I'm gonna make sure that I run the fan as loud as I can. Alrighty, so right here we're at four gigahertz, um, just holding it there. So main board, once again, still the Asus, um, memory, 16 gigs of memory. And we'll go ahead and start the benchmark and watch it bump up to 4.69, 8.9. So 4.7 gigahertz on an H81 motherboard. That simple. And like I said, um, there's, I mean, surprisingly, this Asus motherboard was a little bit more expensive because their ITX one wasn't cheap. Um, but I know that you can get H81 plus micro ATX motherboards for like $35, $40. So, um, yeah, like I said, not the best power delivery system. Wouldn't suggest always doing something like this, but it is very much possible. Um, we'll just go ahead and hit it one more time to watch it bump up to that nice little 4.7 there. And, uh, yeah, um, who would have thunk it? So I've, I've been visiting a lot of forums and... Um, back especially back in the day when I was like looking into all this stuff and um, a lot of the forms were saying depending on chipsets you can overclock and can't overclock the KCPUs but that is fairly false so obviously there are the exceptions like the A's rock I had without rolling it back three BIOSes this would not be possible um, I would seems like Asus, all of Asus motherboards that I've ran into, I've never had a problem with overclocking but I always look at it like this if you can overclock a Pentium G on it um, 3258 then you can more than likely overclock your um, case series i7 I or i5 um, but just you know pay attention to your VRMs and your temperatures and stuff like that because uh, it's not really made for it anyways you guys that is overclocking on a non Z branded motherboard and uh, hope you guys enjoyed it there'll be more stuff to come in the future but uh, this is Steven with all talk on and I'll catch you guys later